Hello everyone, today I'm going to be jumping right into a discussion on anger for mothers and what has been going on for me, what has been triggering me and the different practices in my life over time that I have learned that definitely um, help to mitigate anger and uh, transform it into uh, the virtues of grace, patience, kindness, and ease, right? Doesn't that just sound nice, feel nice in the body? Um, I will be right after this recording an episode sharing um, feedback and like a follow-up of the free from Freebird Society episode that was not published on video but only came out as a podcast episode on my podcast. And in that episode, I will be sharing a little bit more about um, feedback that I got from that episode, um, some more thoughts about gossip and leadership, and a general update of what's going on in our life right now. But this one, I want to keep it short and sweet, maybe around 15, 20 minutes, ideally, so that um, mothers can really gain a lot from this. And also this is leading up to an event that I'm leading online next Thursday, June 27th, 7 to 9 p.m. on Zoom, where we will be going into uh, deeper, uh, more details on a lot of these points and have the opportunity to discuss them in community with a group of women. So I have six points today and uh, let's get right to them. So first point for managing anger and yes, first, I guess I wanted to talk a little bit about what, what kind of anger am I talking about? Um, I'm kind of encompassing everything regarding, uh, like anger, frustration, resentment, um, which can often lead to being passive aggressive, you know, with others, maybe with our partner, with our children. And, um, I've, I've just been observing myself and how I, um, yeah, how these emotions and different experiences flow through my being. And ideally, I would like to strive towards grace, patience, kindness, and ease in my mothering uh, for my own sake, just because it feels more joyful, pleasurable, and comfortable in my body to um, be in that kind of a state and also for my family, my children, and my community. Um, if anyone has ever yelled at their kids and felt like the immense guilt that comes afterwards from that, um, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, there have been a few times where I have been really not proud to uh, really yell pretty hard. And you know, my eldest daughter gets the brunt of this. And to see the look of like sheer terror on her face, it just, it motivates me to really change. And yeah, these kind of events, I mean, <laughs> I guess I'm a bit shy to be talking about them and um, yeah, sharing that I have these, but I, I share because I know that I'm not the only one. And uh, if we can all work on these things together, you know, it'll benefit us and our children. So there's, there's a good reason to, to share these truths and realities, what beha happens behind closed doors. And um, yeah, there's, you know, there's different seasons in, in my life where I have been more or less stressed. And of course, that affects <laughs> my behavior um, with the children. And yes, my nine-year-old gets the brunt of it. So if you're listening and you don't yet have older children, let this be a warning to you <laughs> because, um, you know, it's a lot easier to n not get angry with a toddler. I mean, I know many of you probably have like frustrations with your toddler and moments of like, ah, why? But they're so cute in the way that they look at you and they're so innocent, right? It's, um, yeah, <laughs> it ramps up as they get older, as they reach, I find especially this nine-year-old change, which maybe I will do an episode specifically on the nine-year-old change, uh, is really intense and they become sort of more mature. So you expect more of them 
And in a sense, they, they're trying sometimes like bigger things and make bigger mistakes. And there's, yeah, the like teenage kind of angsty attitude that comes in. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my biggest triggers for me personally right now that trigger my anger or that like stir frustration and resentment. Um, and when that builds over time, that's when eventually there's like an anger outburst when um, I'm stressed or sleep de sleep deprived and triggered, right? It's just like, boom, like all of that just comes out. And so um, some of the attitudes and behaviors of my nine-year-old really trigger me, like when she's especially mean to her younger sister and um, or when she's just, yeah, so, sometimes she can just be so selfish, <laughs> selfish. And I remember me and my siblings like accusing each other of that when we were younger. And yeah, it's just putting all these things into perspective. So definitely some of the behaviors I'm seeing from my nine-year-old are triggering. And um, yeah, they I fall back into like automatic ways that I was parented myself, you know, and I was, I messaged a friend last week. Um, I basically had my period and uh i was just so tired and drained and my daughter my middle daughter was getting ready for her dance rehearsal and so there were like extra dance practices so there was extra stuff going on um there we had my brother-in-law visiting who was helpful you know with children and kitchen and and that kind of work but also to have like an extra person in your space when you're in on your bleed so it was like a double-edged sword yeah I definitely think I preferred having his presence and help um but was also just on edge and uh yeah I was just I was just on edge last week and so it really made me think like I need to figure out um I need to just yeah <laughs> change things up and so basically uh, this episode is what I'm changing up what I'm really focusing on so this is as much for me as it is for you um, that's triggering me, um, challenges around like money and finances and being really frustrated that my husband doesn't make more money. <laughs> that's a trigger, um, at the moment. Um, but again, I share this because, um, I'm going to add, add, add something down here. Um, yeah, I'll just keep going. Um, yeah, finances and um, house tidiness and cleanliness with three children homeschooling right now. Whew, that is just, it gets pretty wild. Um, if I take like a nap with them for a rest and the two girls are, are playing, they can really just create like a tornado has come through the house. It's, it's absolutely wild. So we need to get some kind of... Um, <laughs> control over that and uh base or build some better better systems in the house and really like we're yeah our house is pretty good but uh I think as I have more children and as I want have more things going on I just need things to be cleaner and tidier so that we can be more efficient and clear okay so those are my triggers um I'm curious to hear from you in the comments or you know write in through email and this is something we'll be talking about on our Zoom call like what are your triggers everyone has different um different things different difficulties in their lives different challenges in their marriage or with their children or with their family that are triggering them and um creating this like ball of energy and fire within right <sighs> All right so let's get into the tips and like what I what I will be personally working on in the coming weeks and maybe I can follow up on this episode and see how how things have changed. So number 1, peaceful home. A peaceful home. Right? We we all need a place to come back to and feel like we're resting and being at peace. And first of all, that is like a space within that, that we need to be creating. And that's actually my sixth point about the inner voice. But the inner voice and like our peaceful center within is connected to the peaceful home. Um, it can be really exhausting to come home from a busy day into your home and just feel extra more stressed. And I think many mothers can um, 
like connect on this point and especially as we get more children and they get older and the house kind of gets crazy that you come home and you're just like oh my god there's so much to do in my home and you can't relax in your own home I find sometimes if I go away to visit my mom or someone else my, my in-laws it just feels nice to not be in my own home where I feel so much pressure of all the things that need to be organized and sorted and cleaned um but there are systems that we can put into place uh, to have a peaceful home. And something I recommend for all of you, I will link it in the show notes, is um, Ariel's Light. Ariel, Ariel's Light. And this is run by Melissa, who initially created Waldorf Essentials. And she's a mother of five children. Uh, she had three with uh, her first husband and then went through a divorce, was a single mom for a while, and then had two other children. She has some children with, um, like, she has one or two children with autism, one child definitely with autism, I think, and other children kind of on the spectrum. And I find that she is a wealth of knowledge and um, just gives me so many good tips and inspiration for how to run my home and how to do our homeschool. Not everything lands for me, but I love what she's doing. Um, so her six tips for peaceful home. Um, and so for $5 a month, you can access um, Oriel's Light. There's live calls and you have access to like hundreds of old calls. And that's what I'm doing now as I need to get more inspiration and clarity and build these systems is listening to her calls. So her tips for a peaceful home are examining how we show up. So really watching ourselves and um, filling our cup when we show up, holding space properly for the children, um, examining meltdowns and fights. So even as there's like meltdowns and, you know, explosions of emotion, um, to be able to take a step back, not take them too personally, not beat ourselves up for it and, and observe, right? If we get stuck in this like guilt and um, crushing ourselves for what happened, we can't clearly see how and why that developed and what we can do to change it. Um, number three, systems. So she talks about front loading. So basically like instead of having a morning where you're going crazy and you're melting down, you have to get ready for something, the night before, there's a bunch of things that are sorted, front loading. And she, <laughs> she talks about this a lot. She harps on this a lot. And I think it's because she had five children and she had to learn the hard way. And um, her goal is that all of us mothers don't have to learn the hard way. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm, I guess I've learned the hard way a little bit to myself. And now I'm extra motivated to get organized and build these systems and front load um, so that we have smooth mornings and smooth days. Um, for spiritual practices in connection with um, spirit or source, God, uh, I will be talking to this as well. Five, spice. So, uh, you know, allowing space for a little bit of, um, what's the word, like improvisation and, and just kind of doing things that are different. And six, joy. So following our joy and um, trying to find the joy in, in every little moment. Um, you guys know I talk about, I talk about joy a lot. And sometimes when I get like carried away with what I think needs to happen with our homeschool and with the children, um, and I'm kind of like trying to follow these ideas and wants that I have in my mind, then I can get really frustrated and just, and just snowball and, and lose it. Um, so, yes, I feel like I'm personally a person who's quite good at following joy, but I can still do better <laughs> with that. So those are the, the tips for a peaceful home. And maybe we can, you know, I can dive into some of those things or follow up with, with how um, implementing some of that has, has been going. Um, also, I have noted down here rhythm, sleep, <laughs> and simplicity. I think, like... Peaceful home, these are going to be my, my just my mantras in my mind for the next few weeks. Um, keeping things simple, getting rid of toys so you have less to clean up, um, getting rid of clothes, just like getting rid of the clutter, only keeping items that bring you joy. Um, sleep, being more disciplined on sleep. It's kind of tricky at this time of year. 
honestly, at this time of year, this is coming into my point number two in presence and awareness, um, presence and timing and season, like locating ourselves. Where are we in our life, in our motherhood, in the season, in our, in our cycle? Um, because having awareness and presence of all of these things, uh, I find allows to have like a certain perspective and and sense of presence um so that comes yeah with what was i saying oh yeah <laughs> with the season that we're in so we just came through summer solstice and the full moon that we're like back to back i think the summer solstice was on the thursday and the full moon was on the friday that's a lot of big energy all at the same time my daughters uh just went to ottawa with my mom to visit family and everyone got sick it was like there were too many people in a small house and three dogs and my stepdad and and all these extra children and they all got sick i think my sister was sick her two kids were sick my girls got sick with a fever and um like that's the energy almost of the summer solstice and the full moon put together if we're not careful um so I find that, yeah, early June, there's often this like excitement about summer, getting really busy, and then there's a bit of a crash. So um, I don't know how to make that smoother. Um, but I think at least having awareness, it helps to take a little bit of the edge off, um, knowing where we are in our cycle. And so I'm going to share here too. Um, I have been reading a book about um, sexual energy actually and um, like female energy and from the Taoist system uh, from China and, and the East and they talk there's all these practices about um, channeling your ovarian energy and I've been finding regarding my cycle that like the crash in the week of my period is so hard like I, I really have a lot of energy I you can tell what phase I'm in right now this is when I record podcasts and want to be on screen and then there's a pretty hard crash and what I would like at least is to not crash so hard where I'm taking things out on other people so that's part of like these systems I'm building and just watching and being alert is um how can I have a softer landing <laughs> in in that cycle period so being very aware of like the four weeks or the four parts of your cycle where you're at and what is are the best rhythms and um you know activities that are going to be supporting you because if we think if we're you know conscious in the first part of our cycle when we have a lot of energy then we can land a bit more smoothly in the second part of our cycle so that's my plan um, I'm trying to kind of not allow the ovulation phase energy to be like, woo, too crazy. And like, I can get really excited, um, you know, go pretty highs, uh, big highs and, and deep lows. So what I'm trying to do is when I get onto that high is to like channel that energy through my whole body, ground it a little bit. Um, and also intentionally just send it to like two weeks from now when I'm going to need it. So um, doing some of these practices suggested by Mantak Chia. Um, there's a really nice easy Qigong practice. There's a YouTube video for that that I will also share below. It's very short, but anyway, those are the practices I will be doing um, in the next week or so to um, balance things out a little bit. Number three is um, movement and breath and regular meditation. Um, so yeah this is basically my yoga practice and okay coming back to presence and awareness and locating ourselves with our in terms of like where we are in our life if you're in early motherhood like you just had a baby um some of the things i'm talking about will not be accessible to you for a short amount of time so you do what you can okay i have been there i have had three babies um, i had more patience with um, this baby my third son uh, just really doing what i can and trying to let go and trusting that the time will come when there will be more time um, even today um, this week has been beautiful with <laughs> my girls being away i took advantage 
Uh, I've been waking up at like 6 a.m. before my son and having time to do a long yoga practice. Um, I've been doing breath work as well. And that has been feeling absolutely, absolutely amazing. And I have not been able really to do that for two years. And even in his pregnancy, it was a really busy time for us, um, kind of running the school and, and homeschooling. And I didn't, I, I kind of got it, but uh, I didn't really have like weeks away with um, my girls being away anyway. So that's part of locating ourselves in time and where we're at and just doing the best with what we have and being graceful with ourselves for it. You know, I'm saying this and um, this perspective and, and um, holding this thought, you know, habit, thought form helps, has helped a lot tremendously, especially with this last baby and postpartum. Um, because I didn't, I didn't really get it beforehand. So, uh, it'll, it'll change no matter where you are, it'll change. And if you have young children, it's going to improve. So, you know, just doing what you can with what you have, with where you're at. Um, if we can really learn to honor ourselves and be graceful with ourselves as we, as we learn to hold that, it makes such a difference. Um, so movement and breath, Qigong, uh, there's, yeah, there's two Qigong channels that I'm really loving, maybe three. One is called White Tiger Qigong. She's, they're like women that are teaching. Um, I find their practice maybe sometimes too gentle and slow for me and maybe too short, but I like her energy. So I still will do that. There's Nick Lawfrey Qigong. I, I love his stuff. 20 minutes if you can find it, even if we can learn some of the exercises, bring them into our day. Um, just fantastic. He has one specifically for releasing um, like stress and anger, I believe. And um, yeah, those are basically the two Qigong channels that I'm really enjoying. And then dance, right? So just putting on music and just dancing. So trying to move the body a little bit every day. Shaking is such an amazing practice. If you just like put on a song and just shake your body everywhere as much as you can, um, all the things, everything that can shake, no matter what's shaking, it definitely makes you be aware of everything that can shake. And, um, but learning to love it and allow it to shake, I have found that has been an amazing practice to release like any tension that we're storing um, in the body. Um, talking it out. So number four is community. Talking it out. So not being alone, finding like-minded mothers, um, coming out of our isolation, speaking to our partners. Not all partners are maybe great at this and at listening. Um, my partner usually is, but a lot of the times he can notice if I've already talked to my girlfriends and I'm kind of coming to him with the like husband version of the conversation. Sometimes he says to me like, don't turn me into one of your girlfriends. <laughs> um, like he even says like, just put it on the podcast first, like get it out of your system, talk it out, put it on the podcast, connect with your women and then come to me. Um, of course, you know, it's not for everything, but I, I love that he's pretty frank about it. And I think that that can be useful for a lot of you. Um, yeah, talk it out with women um, in a community. Um, that's why we've built our private online network, um, the Mighty Networks. And that's just there's a free discussion board that's available to you. And for $6 a month, you get access to like three free calls, I think, and discounts on uh, other workshops that we're doing. So for example, our anger workshop next week is $30, which is I, I'm hoping still pretty accessible to people. And if you pay for the LifeWorks community for $6 a month, then you get 50% off um, that, that workshop you know so we're trying to keep things affordable and accessible to women while also feeling like there's uh, a fair exchange that makes us feel happy to do the work that we're doing so that's i'm all about building community uh in person and online talking it out and um yeah it can be hard sometimes to come out of our isolation and our inner world but in our women's circles even when we get together with mothers we take a moment to uh, share what's going well and what's hard, what's what's not going so well in our mothering. And um, I find 
when we really set the space for those intentional conversations with friends and with other women, for me, it has changed my life because I have learned so much of what other people are really going through, which we wouldn't really be sharing otherwise, you know, in, in, in most kind of circumstances, because we don't always give space to say like, hey, what's hard for you right now, you know? Um, and it's not to like wallow in our problems, but just to really let it out. Women often cry, just have an emotional release and are just held in love and seen by the community. Um, anyway, I'm very, very passionate about that. I think it's, it's huge. I love it. Okay. So that's number four, five prayer. Um, so reaching out to, you know, like, uh, divine beings and angels and, even ancestors perhaps who are on the other side. So um, in some of my darkest moments last year when I was finding it really tough having the baby and with the two children at home, I would pray to Mary and I would just say, Mary, Mary, help me. Mary, Mary, help me. Uh, I'm trying, you know, my best to not allow, you know, dark thoughts and thoughts of like, this is, you know, I'm always going to be like this. This is never going to work out. Um, by the way, in my thoughts, I try to eliminate always and never altogether from my thought and speech in that kind of sense. Um, or, you know, even things like, what am I doing? I've made all the wrong choices. Like, those are definitely thoughts that I have in the worst moments when things feel really hard. And I try to catch myself to at least not give too much energy to those thoughts and one of the ways I find the best way to, to change that is by saying prayers. I have like my own version of the Hail Mary. Um, o Mani Padme Hum has been, uh, you know, Kuan Yin's mantra of compassion has been a very powerful mantra for me. And um, yeah, so just speaking to to those divine beings, speaking prayers, mantras, and uh, changing the thoughts in our minds. And number six is connecting to our inner voice. Um, and this is a quote. This is a little book. You guys know I've been into Elizabeth H. recently. Uh, I, I've recorded some videos that I still need to publish, um, reading parts of her books that have really impacted me. And I love this quote. This little book is only $13 from Amazon and it's little quotes for each day of the week for the like different energies of each day of the week. So today is Saturday and this is a quote from Saturday and it's from Elizabeth H. Even in the center of the great, very greatest cyclone, there is absolute stillness. Ah. <sighs> uh, I, I love that quote because I can picture, you know, when you see that sky view image of the earth and the cyclones from the top and you can see that center in the middle. Um, or I remember the movie Twister from when I was a kid and when they go into the center of the tornado. Uh, that, that feeling of, of that center of seeing the craziness and seeing the center um, is beautiful. And of course, in my work of quantum healing, uh, I work with connecting people to that that deep, um, it doesn't even have to be that far away, really, but to um, the deeply loving and compassionate and wise and grounded and present part of ourself that is always there and always accessible. Um, and even in Melissa's talk from Oriel's Light, she said this quote, which I thought was so beautiful. If I close my eyes, it's just me and God. Um, right? So the biggest thing is to catch ourselves. <laughs> um, my husband often says like that I will go from a, a zero to a two, three in terms of frustration and expressing my frustration. And instead of going up towards like a five, six, I then explode to a 10. Um, and that's often happens from being, trying to be a gentle mother, um, right? Like sometimes I have friends that I see them with their children and they're, always talking to them like this and it's just always so sweet and you know loving and um, sometimes I want to be like that mom all the time 100% of the time and one it's not really in my nature to be that way I think I'm a bit more like earthy and fiery than airy and watery in that sense I have a friend who I would say is like a very watery lunar person she is a cancer 
and uh she kind of is like that with her children and I think she's like that always because that she even has two sons and I said do you ever yell at your kids and I think she was like no like I don't need to they just respect me <laughs> but yeah I think she's she's Muslim and she has like she's always had very deep something powerful strong she has a strong spiritual practice and I think strong like love for herself and respect for herself and so her boys they don't mess around with her. I don't know. They're older now. She's pregnant. So uh, um, actually, it's it's May. She was on my podcast. She's one of the first episodes of my podcast. And um, maybe I should ask her how that's going for her. <laughs> She's still able to manage, manage that. But uh, yeah, I sometimes try to be that mom all the time. And what I try to focus on now is going from zero to one two to expressing like a five six in terms of like raising my voice slightly and holding my ground a little bit um instead of having like a full explosion where I no longer really have control and I'm I'm yelling really hard one of the things M Melissa said in um this episode too was uh because it was an episode about patience so I feel like patience and frustration are like two different sides of of the same coin and how to um embody and and have more patience and she was saying that sometimes it's not about having more patience and like not getting angry or frustrated sometimes the the theme is actually tolerance and it's actually um, either being too tolerant of behaviors that are not okay or not tolerant enough of behaviors that are that are normal. So I let you sit with that and, and think about that. Um, in my case, I think especially when it comes to my kids, I can be too tolerant of behaviors that should be nipped in the bud right away and then there would not, wouldn't be like an escalation of the situation. Um, I think that's all I wanted to share today. Um, very excited about this. Uh, my idea is that some of the women who will be joining us in a Zoom call can listen to this podcast episode first to have like some preparation and then we'll have some interesting discussions about even some of the things that I mentioned today. You can even email me to get have some questions and comments and we will put all that into our Zoom event, so which is again next Thursday at um, 7 p.m., 7 to 9 p.m. and the information will be posted below. And uh, I did wanna share that I got this new jewelry, which is I think showing up beautifully against the black here, right? Oh my goodness. Um, I um, was a little bit reluctant to purchase them. You know, we're tight on money. And so when you're tight on money, do you spend money on jewelry? You know, that sounds frivolous. Um, but it was Taurus season <laughs> and Mother's Day. And I saw this one. This is a wearing Mary. It's like, a, it's a Mary in prayer. And on the back of it, it says, my light is your light. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, you won't be able to see them, but you can check them out on my Instagram or the website will be below. And well, this is like my prayer. <laughs> and this one is, I think, silver on the inside and gold on the outside. It's quite heavy. It's probably one of the most beautiful and like richest pieces of jewelry that I, I've owned that I've ever purchased, really. Um, Vitali bought it for me for Mother's Day. Uh, and I feel really good when I put it on. <laughs> I do. I don't know if it'll change anything, if it helps. I'm not too much into like buying crystals or physical things to help, mostly because we can't really afford it right now. One day I would love to have really big, beautiful crystals. Um, but also when you're a mother and you have children, you want to put your money into your family and your kids and your food and, you know, improving their life. Um, so yes, but I have to say I followed my joy and I listened to this and um, I now have a discount code, a 10% discount code. And I actually used another mom's discount code, um, an influencer from Australia that I follow to purchase this. And I'm so excited that I was able to support her and her work, which I believe in. Um, and now I have a discount code. And if anyone is looking for jewelry, 
inspiring jewelry. They have, you know, a lot of other little charms and different things of options. And then this one I got from Amazon for $28, a bit cheaper. And I'm really happy with it too. I find sometimes I'm, I don't always want to wear this one out. It's like a bit too showy for me and my style and where I'm at. I'm not used to wearing like big piece, bigger pieces of gold like this. So I got this one and I always love wearing an Ankh. I just feel very connected to Egypt um, and the Magdalene's. And so this one inspires me in that way. And this one is from Amazon. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. You know, the quality is definitely not the same as the Wearing Mary, um, but I have the link down below if you're interested in this one as well. I'm really excited to be sharing with you guys my my favorite things and I can be a way for you to support me and my work um, if these items you know could bring joy and inspiration to your life um, so with that I'm going to close I welcome you know any feedback and comments about this episode and I look forward to joining those who um, feel aligned to dive deeper into this conversation and exploration with us. We will be, I will be leading a um, QHHT meditation, a group meditation as part of the anger event, which is um, super fun because everyone will be able to get their own experience and insights from their inner voice that we will then share with the group. So I'm like, you know, curious to see what everyone else will bring to the table regarding um, anger and motherhood. And then um, Marissa will be leading us in a somatic dance practice to move everything um, out of the body or feel what's in the body and move it if it, if it needs to be moved out or wherever or transformed. Uh, and yeah, I think some beautiful experiences and discussions will ensue from that experience. So thank you for listening and I wish you a beautiful day.